you don't have to wait for Godot 4 to get great new features. Godot 3.4 is there with many quality of life improvements. Portal calling for efficient 3D optimization, a completely revamped UI theme editor, and more. Let's take a look at all the cool new features in Godot 3.4. 3D rendering performance has been a pain point for many due to the lack of optimization for large environments. Godot 4 should greatly improve rendering speed. Until then, you can now use portal culling and occluders. Culling is the process of finding geometry the player can't see and not rendering it. Godot does this for everything outside the view and faces looking away from the camera. With the room manager and portal nodes, you can now split large worlds into smaller chunks and entirely skip the ones the player can't see. The occluder node detaches to large moving models and helps to optimize rendering further. You can now export 3D meshes using the GLTF format. That's perfect for when you block out levels in Godot. For example, using the excellent Kenny prototype tools from the asset library. Open the exported mesh in Blender to cover your boxes with polished assets. To export a scene as GLTF, go to Project, Tools, Export GLTF. This feature also comes with improved GLTF support for skin 3D models. The new high-quality ACES fitted tone mapper makes lights behave more realistically. With it, light emitters become brighter as you increase their energy. You can select this new tone mapper in any environment resource under the Tone Map tab. You can now emit particles from a ring. The CSG Polygon node, which you use for procedural cables or roads, got two improvements. You can now significantly reduce the face count with the Path Simplify Angle property. Just crank it up to make flat parts use fewer vertices. UV coordinates now stretch better along the path, which is perfect for long roads. The shader language got support for data structures, which you can use as custom types in your shaders. The animation editor now automatically creates a reset animation by default. It's a special animation you can use to reset all nodes to their default state. To do so, in the animation editor, open the edit menu and select apply reset. Moving to the editor's interface, there are many small yet welcome improvements. Contextual toolbar icons and menus are now highlighted to distinguish them from other tools. The collision layers and masks now have larger buttons and numbers. You can use up to 32 of them instead of 20. You can see and restore the previous color in color pickers. You can now sort files by name, type, and modify date in the file system dock. The export template manager got redesigned to be much more intuitive. You can drag and drop node properties from the inspector onto a script. Also, notice the improved colors in the script editor. The top of the inspector got redesigned to be clearer and more ergonomic. You can now jump to the selected nodes documentation in one click. You can now right click any resource field and select quick load to load any resource from your project with the fuzzy finder. Press control and right click on the viewport to directly create a node or instantiate a scene at the mouse's position. Those are just a couple of highlights of the many improvements made to the editor. Let's move to a couple of miscellaneous features. The opt-in input delta smoothing project setting can greatly reduce jitters and other hiccups with games using vSync. Button groups now have a signal to know which button was pressed. It's convenient for apps made in Godot. On the website, you can now create progressive web apps. Those are web versions of your game that work like a native app on the user's phone or computer. There's now support for a secure authentication method called HMAC, which is necessary to use web services like Game Analytics. You can also do encryption and decryption, generate RSA keys, and sign and verify files with them using the new crypto and encrypt classes. The JavaScript singleton lets you get and call JavaScript code quickly from GDScript. We use it in our GDScript Learn app, and it greatly simplifies the creation of HTML5 apps and games. After the editor and manual, the built-in class reference now supports localization. It is still largely untranslated, so if you want to help, you can contribute using the link in the description. The kinematic body physics got essential improvements and fixes. Your characters should finally stick reliably to animated platforms and when on slopes. Finally, the UI theme editor got a complete overhaul. It's an essential tool for user interface design in Godot. You can now overwrite default styles much more easily and edit multiple style boxes at once. You can load your own scenes to test the theme and pick nodes interactively in the top bar. A new interface allows you to manage all theme properties and even add custom ones. 
we made a tutorial for this new theme editor. The link is in the description. There are many more improvements and bug fixes in this release. You can find them all on the official website. Should be able to update projects from Godot 3.3 to 3.4 without too much trouble. We didn't have any issues here, but as always, you'll want to make a backup and test just to be safe. We're using Godot 3.4 already to make an open source app for anyone to learn Godot's GDScript language. It is part of Learn to Code from Zero, a project to teach absolute beginners to program using Godot. We're on Kickstarter only for a couple more hours at the time of release to fund this ambitious project. If you want a great course to learn to code or help a loved one get into game development, now's your last chance to get it at a lower price. Click the link at the top of the description to access the Kickstarter page. Be creative, have fun, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.